you've ever tried Linux? <laughs> Recently, I decided I wanted to learn C++. I've dabbled a little bit in the language, but nothing beyond some simple console apps I made using a Udemy course and some tutorials. I've always wanted to learn it properly because it's the one popular language that I don't have a decent grasp on, and considering how big it is, and more importantly, how much money C++ developers make, I feel like I should probably learn it, uh, since I, I like money. So, I thought the best way to learn, considering my hobby as a game developer, was to jump in with a simple game. That simple game being Pong, considering, uh, the first video on this channel made me an expert in that field and uh spoiler alert it uh it actually went pretty well um you can you can start the actual video now. <laughs> C++, for those unaware, like other languages, it is a compiled language, meaning every time you want to run or test a program, it has to be converted from human-readable code into machine code. In computer science, the compiler is described as a black box, a box with inputs and outputs. You input your code, the black box converts to all into ones and zeros, and then executes the instructions the compiler gave, creating whatever program you wrote. On the positive side, it means C++ programs are incredibly fast, because all the code is already translated, it just needs to run. The downside is every single time you need to test your code, you have to recompile it and in order to do that you also need a separate compiler in the first place luckily the editor i'm using is visual studio code which has its own built-in compiler called msvc standing for microsoft visual c++ um, which is a very creative name by the way I, I don't know how microsoft came up with that microsoft visual c++ come on so i opened up visual studio and created a new project called pong I made sure everything worked by writing the only code i remembered a simple hello world and luckily everything compiled with no errors this is a C++ video. No, it didn't. I then started figuring out how the rendering was going to work. Although you could write the rendering code for entirely from scratch, it'd probably take like three years just to get a window to open. And by that point, you probably have so many memory leaks, the program won't even launch. But uh, luckily, there are graphics libraries to do all of the work for us. Uh, there are plenty of C++ graphics libraries, all doing different but similar things. We've got OpenGL, SFML, SDL, and... There... There... Uh... Uh, 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 uh. The one I decided on was Raylib. Raylib is actually a lot easier than I expected it to be. Throughout this product, I realized I had a much better grasp on what I was writing than I originally expected. Granted, I didn't dive too deep into what makes C++ such a difficult language to learn up until the end, but up until the later parts of the project, honestly, it really wasn't too different from the other languages I've used. Foreshadowing is a narrative device in which suggestions are warned in like six lines I had a basic window open and even that was entirely based on the init window and close window methods. I then started drawing something to the screen. All I wanted was to fill the screen with a black background but instead I ended up using 100% of my already failing six year old GTX 1080. Uh. <laughs> it turns out I had uh, forgotten a crucial step which was the end drawing method. Behind the scenes when a computer or the GPU is running a window it uses what's called frame buffers. Typically, there are two different buffers. There's a back buffer and a front buffer. The front buffer holds the current image, while the back buffer holds the next one. Whenever a new frame buffer is created, the old one is supposed to be tossed out. Instead, it was constantly storing new frames in a VRAM. And um, considering my frame rate wasn't locked and I had literally nothing on screen, um, that's a lot of frames um, constantly being stored. Um, it's... That's a lot. That's a... That's a hell of a lot of frames. Luckily, the end drawing method uh, does a whole bunch of things, including throwing away those unneeded frames. So once I added in that method call, I now had a working window with a black background. All right, I have fixed the issue. So now when the game runs, there is a it is just fully black and the game doesn't crash or max out my GPU anymore. Now that I had a window in a background, I could actually start making Pong. Luckily, Pong graphics are incredibly simple, just using primitive shapes like two rectangles and a circle. Uh, and since they are simple shapes, Raylib has built in methods to draw both of those. And with literally three lines, both paddles and the ball are rendered. So uh, now it's time to get the ball rolling. No. I, I don't know why I said that. Getting the ball to move around isn't hard. In reality, every frame or every time our main game loop runs, it adds a set speed to the X and the Y. But since things are moving, uh, just like Unity, we have to multiply it by my favorite running gag in programming, delta time. I mean, in Raylib, it's called get frame time, but it's it's basically delta time since delta time is just the time since the last frame. But shut currently the ball just moves off screen, so let's add in collision. The code for this checks if the ball is going off screen, and then it just flips the speed to make it look like it's bouncing off the balls. So now, what's Pong without the two pals actually moving? Literally nothing so let's add that in much like the ball the paddle movement is basically just adding to or subtracting from the y position whether the respective up and down key is pressed Raylib has a built-in method for checking key presses so i use that to check whether the w and s keys were pressed for the left paddle and the up and down arrow keys were pressed for the right and just like that the paddles were moving and so was the ball i then got sidetracked and learned about structs so i decided to refactor the code and put the paddle and the ball in their own structs uh, this helped a lot with the paddles so both of them could inherit from the same variables and uh, it's basically like a class in python 
or a class of C++, I don't really know the difference. <laughs> Everything was now moving, but uh, the ball doesn't bounce off the paddles, so I got to work on that. Raylib has a built-in method to check for shape collision, and coincidentally, there was a method for a circle rectangle collision. Um, unfortunately, the method takes in two parameters I had not used yet, a vector 2 and a rectangle object. Vector 2 I knew from Unity, so I understood that was most likely going to be the X and Y position of the ball, but the rectangle object I have never used. So after a bit of research, coercing, YouTube videos, and uh, several intoxicants, I slammed my hands against the keyboard and got something working. My brain's kind of like deteriorating. Once that was figured out, before I start on the next big feature, there were two things I needed to fix. If the ball went past the bounds of the screen, it just kept going. There was no way for the ball to reset, so let's add that. All that needed to be done was a simple check to see if the ball reached the edges of the screen, and then it would just set the ball's position back to the center. I also wanted the ball to speed up every time I hit one of the paddles, uh, just to make the game a little harder over time. My monitor's refresh rate is not fast enough. <laughs> By this point, the main game loop was pretty much complete. All that was left to do was tweak a few things, get a scoring system set up, and add a win condition for both paddles. I added a cap to the ball speed and changed some physics stuff to make it feel a little better to play, and then got to work on the scoring system. The scoring system didn't seem too daunting of a task in theory. All I really needed was an integer that counted up every time one of the paddles scored, and even in the implementation, that worked and it made sense. Um, but the text, however, was a completely different story. C++ doesn't have a native string data type like other languages uh, and instead uses the char data type with a pointer. I'm going to be honest, I have no fucking idea what a pointer does. All I know is that a char pointer allows us to create strings. I've done a ton of research in preparation for not only making this game, but the, writing the script. And pointers have been the only thing that has really stumped me. Every time I hear the term memory addresses, my eyes glaze over, I go into a catatonic state. None of this makes any sense to me, and this is the point where C++ finally broke me. Up until this point, everything came pretty naturally to me, as most of this was fairly similar to the other languages I've used. But once I started dealing with the more advanced syntax, that's when I realized how deep this rabbit hole was really going to get for me. But despite my understanding, or lack thereof, uh, after a good bit of time messing with the draw text method and uh, finding out about the text format method, I finally got text drawing on the screen and wrapped up the scoring. I'm going to bed now. And now the game is playable. It's pretty much done. I, I mean, it's Pong, so it's not really much of a hard game to make, but you can go check out the game on my GitHub page. Take a look at my code, see how awful it is. If you think I'm funny or just thought this video was just a slightly bit entertaining, um, like the video or even subscribe if you want to see more mental breakdowns in audio visual format. Um, I'm Osiris. Follow me on Twitter. Um, I don't know how to close out videos, so uh, good, good, goodbye.